Hey guys, um, today's story is really weird. I don't know how to describe it and don't want to give too much away, but we come across one of the chaos gods from 40k in D&D, which it's really fucking weird. It's a very strange interpretation. Yeah, really. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at the end of the video. Be me. Dirty succubus passing for tiefling bard. Only take corrupted souls, never pure ones. Also, almost never corrupt others. Party has no clue. Be not me. DM, cook and longtime friend. Now also roommate. Usually stalks the comments, replying by stealing my phone and commenting. Trying to make her make an account. Won't do so out of principle. Paladin, cute cat loving person. Never seen her slash his face. Transsexual. No clue which direction though. Misc internet team members. Edgy boys, weirdos and a kid I think 15ish. Very nice guy. Dad sitting in the background laughing his ass off every time something funny happens. Party healer and paladin went down in a blaze of glory, taking 200 plus monsters and even the big bad evil guy with her in the process. After the heartbreaking realisation that we permanently lost our paladin, DM says, A light so pure it can only be made by higher beings appears in front of you all. The god Aiel passes through the light carrying it with her. I ask, So this is not an avatar of Aiel? To which the DM says, this is the god Aeel. No avatar or illusions. Standing in front of you is a being of pure good, pure intentions and pure emotions. You are currently looking at a god. What do you do? Oh fuck, dot JPG. I read through my backstory and especially my quirks. I start burning when in areas which are touched by a god with good alignment. Shit, dot ass. If source is strong enough, I drop all illusion spells and disguises. Source is an actual god, you can't possibly get stronger than that. Remind DM to look up my quirks. Eyes widen. Oh shit, the DM proclaims. Players at the edge of their seats. As you all see your paladin's god Aeel step through the divine light, your bard bursts into flames. In the flames you can make out the shape of your bard. She starts growing as demonic wings sprout from her back, hair turning into a darker red than the fire surrounding her. Eyes now glowing a dark crimson and skin turning from a light purple to a dark tan. Her skin now covered in purple runic tattoos pulsating with every breath. Dame continues, burning with a holy fire you see succubus. Nobody knows how to react. First a god and now a succubus. I chug a fire proofing potion. Fire hurts less now but I'm still blazing. Aeel turns to me. Ah shit, here I die. Aeel steps forward to me. Time to make my great escape. Cast invisible. Illusion magic doesn't work. Shit. Aeel raises her hand. Steps closer. Dear, uh, God, no. Hits me with a mighty slap, sending me flying into a rock. Knockout. I wake up feeling warm. Ha, I'm not dead. Woohoo! Aeel real close to me. Ah, crap. Wait, we're hugging? Ask her why she slapped me only to hug me. The slap was for being impure of both heart and soul. But I soon realise all the good you have done and how highly the paladin who worshipped me loved you. Curious, I asked. Love, as in, love love? Loved like a friend, she replies. God damn it, friend zone from the grave! <laughs> <laughs> Get dumb idea. Lean in to kiss Aeel. I try to seduce her. I tell to the DM. DM face palming, but seemingly gets an idea. Natural 20. Oh yeah! <laughs> Aeel leans in. As if trying to seduce you as well, but you coming a few seconds before her. She leans into the kiss. I'm kissing a god. Look at me, mom! <laughs> Making a charisma saving throw. Charisma highest stat by far. Okie dokie. Pass with flying colours. Aeel speaks up. I cannot see if you are pure of heart if you won't let me. Kiss me again. I say as I wink. Manage to resist it again. End up ferociously making out with the god of fertility, harvest and love. Takes her seven attempts before she manages it, and I land a natural one. In those attempts, I roll to seduce Aeel, always landing astronomically high. My charisma stat was insane. Players losing their shit seeing a god ferociously making out with a succubus, who appeared to have been their friend since the start. Said succubus trying to instantly kiss the god, proving that it was indeed their friend. Aeel asked to kiss again, to be sure, while looking at the floor. I would have seen a blush if it wasn't for the fire. Tell her, the next kiss will cost you your hand in marriage, as I lean in. DM looking hot and bothered by this, visibly blushing. 
That's right, I saw you, you dirty-minded raccoon. Make a charisma roll. Natural 20. Next week, after much talk and a small campaign of murdering an old god, decide to don my disguise. Tiefling bard. Make my eyes stay normal since I want to embrace change. Look for a priest, Marius. Hope to make it quick since the weather is good and the sun is high. Ask a head priest outside a church of Aeel if he can marry me and another woman. Priest replies with, Aeel disproves of same-sex marriage. Go find another god from a lesser religion. Anyway, we don't want your devil kind here. A wide, unloving smile donning his face. A flash of lightning happens. A white carriage dragged by unicorns with lightnings for ropes, escorted by angels and half-gods alike singing songs of joy around the new marriage, appears from the flash. Priest about to shit himself. Carriage lands outside the church as all the good-aligned gods step out. I burst into flames and lose my tiefling look. Priest shits himself. Prayers to Aeel could be heard, but I can hear he doesn't really know all the words or rhythms of said prayer. Not fitting for the chief of the church. Aeel steps gracefully out of the carriage. A simple white wool dress around her from with a head carved wooden crown, adorning a piece of quartz. After all, love isn't about flashy jewellery. It's a holy ceremony binding two entities in eternal love. My heart burning with love as I see my soon-to-be wife walk over to the priest. Priest, raise your head, she says in a divine voice. Just as the priest raises his head, Corn, the god of war, pride and justice, cleaves it off. No blood. His head just falls on the ground and his body goes limp. Corn says in a booming voice, Would hate for this rotten blood to spoil your dress. Still burning with love and actual fire, I look at Aiel with nothing but love, not noticing my dwindling health. Kronk, the god of health, medicine and poison, looks at me, tries to heal me but it does nothing, actually makes it burns more. Kronk gets an idea. Kronk says some words in an unknown language, making the sky go dark. So much for the nice weather. The priest's body turns into a dark ooze as Hela, the god of death, famine and underworld, crawls out of it. This is a pure evil god. Hela looks around, her twisted, rotting body contorting to an unnatural degrees, seemingly on guard. Kronk says some strange words, sounds like death, sadness and life. Kronk gives Hela the head of the now dead priest. Hella takes one look at Aeel, bows and turns into a beautiful young woman, wearing a black dress adorned with real skulls from all races, its face never showing emotion and eyes always shut, white face paint resembling a skull can be seen. Hella starts healing me using impure souls from the underworld, the souls I've helped collect. I tell Aeel I don't have any clothes nice enough to use. Just as I say that, A cloth appears out of nothing, covering me in a traditional wedding dress. I ask, I love the dress, but it's not really me, is it? Aeel looks to Korn and says something similar to what a harp sounds like if it had a voice. Korn, visibly uncomfortable, whispers something. A crack opens in the air as moans of pleasure spill out. Slanesh, the god of pleasure, lust and corruption steps out. She takes a single look at Aeel. Oh my, sugar getting married? She turns around and takes one look at Hela. And why is it here? Aeel says, We need a dress for my bride, and I think of Hela as a temporary member of the good guys club for now. Hela now looking interested. Hold on, honey. Wife? You mean the succubus here? Say no more, sugar. Think of it as a gift. I can't wait to spy on you two lovebirds. Slanesh looks at me. Hey, hot stuff. I have no idea how you managed to romance Aeel, but she needs a good fucking. Preferably without ripping her soul from her body. This is my gift for you. Have fun in bed now. Make many children. She says while making her long black leather clad fingers into your heart. DM says, You no longer feel connected to Slanesh, and no longer have any cravings for souls. I ask DM if I'm still burning. Yep, still burning. Slanesh looks at Aeel and says, As for the first gift I hinted at, I'll need some time to prepare. Oh, who am I kidding? I've shipped you two for years. (laughs) I have the perfect dress. While licking her lips, she opens another portal filled with lust. Be quick now, darling, if you want it. You need to catch it, Selena says while looking at me. She pulls out a black and red dress that looks, 
alive and hungry. Dear Aeel, it's coming at me. What the fuck is this? I don't know. Why is Slanesh here? It's d d <laughs> It's not 40k. <laughs> I start running. Slanesh laughs a hearty laugh. Teammates look at this go down. Edgy boy using his chance of distraction to assassinate Corn ended up with a broken dagger and a missing jaw. Party cook getting recipes from Kronk, who is a total dad with recipes, paying no attention to the dress trying to eat me. Dress catches up, putting itself on, literally eats my current clothes. R.I.P. magical gear worth over 160,000 gold. Now dressed in a black wedding dress trimmed with red, the black in the dress shimmering with pink waves. Feels weird, but good. Dress Tulis. Ask Slanesh if she has another one. Secretly, just want my old rags back. And for the dress, less tonguey. Slanesh finishes up making one of my party members dream sweet dreams of his dead wife. Oh, honey, you're as thin as a stick. <laughs> Why am I thin as a stick? <laughs> the biggest Slanesh is really saucy. Like, I this say. Slanesh is like, I'm imagining her as, um, like a... A southern bell? Yeah. Oh, honey. Uh, oh, oh, sugar. Yeah, that's what I've kind of gone. Oh, honey. Oh, honey, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Oh, honey, you're as thin as a stick. You really need to eat more, you know. I'll make Kronk cook up a mighty feast for your wedding day. But how do we fix the dress? Sort of dodging the question here, I reply. Oh, sugar, I'll show you how it works. I made it especially for you to wear every day. Especially since it's stuck to you now. She sort of glances over that last part. Slanesh whispers some words to me and shows me how to make it shrink slash expand. Sugar, you're a natural. It has many interesting features. Notice how you're no longer on fire? 100% fire resistant. It even hardens when subjected to physical attacks and reflects most magic ones. Be careful though, after it has reflected either one, it needs to recharge. Takes about 10 seconds. Previous armour made me resistant to cold. Shit compared to this. Holy crap, thanks. This is the best day ever. Don't mention it, sugar. Oh my god. Why the fuck? That's the way I'm visioning this in my head. This is a really weird interpretation of Slanash. Really weird? This is is new to me anyway. (laughs) Don't mention it, sugar. It even has some out of combat abilities. Like colour changing, fabric changing, and underwear has a vibrator... (laughs) At this point, I yell elbows her in the side. I look around. A lot of holy deities have arrived. Townsfolk is gathering, confused. Our rogue's jaw is missing. Times are good. The wedding happens and I yell cooperates with Hella to make the party paladin appear. Although ghostly, but it is really her. Paladin marries us. Although with no formal training, I think it's alright if the god herself says it's fine. Everyone cheering. Gods all around joining the party to see the strange couple. Slanesh effectively becoming the aunt in this weird family. Hela being the strange far off member everyone knows but nobody sees. Kronk being the cool uncle that knows neat stuff and cooks great food. Party royally confused. Kid's father laughing his freaking ass off. End up getting 53 children. Slanesh teaching Aeel the secret word for rattling my fillings from downstairs. Oh God. Oh Jesus Christ, in Kronk helping raise the 53 children. Corn raising the D&D equivalent of Hercules, a character that reappears in a later campaign. Hela being creepy, but a good babysitter. Who else to protect dear family members than death itself? We live happily ever after. Campaign ends. Anyway, that's how Greece's gods work. It actually is. It is? It actually, actually is pretty bang on oh. for Greek, god, Greek mythology. Yeah, it is. That's actually, actually pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. But that's not Slanesh. <laughs> I know. That was a really weird interpretation of Slanesh, I have to say. That was definitely... The most... I've never heard of somebody talking about Slanesh like I know. That I, I, I really buy into the idea of Slanesh being like a weird daddy. Like, for instance, like... I think of like Cenobites almost, you know, like Hellraiser, that type of thing. Yeah. I always like to think of maybe like the voice of Slanesh as being like disembodied. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, like maybe the mouth is stitched up or something like that and the voice just verbates around. Yeah. But it, you don't exactly know where it's coming yeah, from. Yeah, she's not talking like yeah. a sun bell. Yeah, she definitely okay, doesn't. Okay, sugar. That's not my Slanesh no, anyway. That's not, not my Not whatever I think of Slanesh anyway. <laughs> it's a bit of a, what would be the right word for that? I don't know. 
Oh fuck! I don't know. It's just fucking know. weird. What the fuck you would call that one? It's dead on you, Joe. Definitely an interesting interpretation <laughs> on that. Like... I'll give it that. Like, you know? Ooh, okay. Yeah, it's something. But hey, look, guys, let us know what you thought down below. I quite enjoyed this one. I thought it was a bit different. We haven't done anything about, like, you know, succubus in a while. I... Or succubi. People here are getting yeah. triggered in there. Yeah, okay, look, like, succubi, whatever, whatever. But look, let us know what you thought down below. And as always, remember, like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye!